Hello everyone, in the last weird half episode uh, I encountered some print problems and I ordered MGF parts as I said in that video but they weren't delivered on time yet so we will continue that on this video and we will get our first prints from that, fix whatever problems we encounter and then uh, do some of the finishing things that I planned for the Voron 0.1 and in the next episode we will probably start modding as usual so yeah, as you can see the MGF parts are now here and I mounted them to the printer and started my first print with them. Well, the first print with the MGF parts, if you define success as managing to finish a print, it was a success, but uh, I don't know what happened, but this almost looks like pressure advance to me, almost looks like there is too much pressure advance, but I mean I did create the file from scratch, so... Unless I made a mistake, I shouldn't have enabled pressure advance yet, but I guess I'll check the config file, see what I can change, and if nothing works, I guess I can try printing slower, but yeah, this really looks like pressure advance, so I don't know. Well, I was right. As you can see, I left the pressure advance enabled. I don't know how this happened, because I did create this file from scratch, but I did copy-paste a few parts and... Uh, I guess I skipped that. Uh, it definitely should have been set to zero because, well, pressure advance, you need to set it for your printer and even if you want to copy it, well, I was moving from a Bowden extruder, so uh, yeah, definitely need to be reset again. So I'll set it to zero, do another print, and if it looks good, we'll move on to other tuning steps. Here is the new print and you can see that it is much, much better than the old one. There are still some few problems on this, but it's overall pretty good and you can see that the majority of the problem was pressure advance as you can see and this also means that i didn't have to order the parts in mjf most likely anyway since uh, the problem was most likely the pressure advance in that case as well i just didn't notice this and uh, yeah you know happens i guess but anyway now the print quality is pretty decent there are still a few things i want to do you can see some resonance marks on here, so I will run the ADXL345 input shaper. I'll also calibrate pressure advance, but it looks pretty good out of the box, so uh, uh, by the, uh, with zero, that is not out of the box. So yeah, that's not something, I don't need to touch that too much. I'll double check the E steps, X steps, Y steps, Z steps, I don't expect them to be uh, any different, because you know, just eyeballing this, this looks correct, but obviously there could be a small variation here and there, so I'll check them, but should be good to go. And, uh, yeah, after all that, we'll start a new print, and I'll also do a Benchy, and, yeah, if they all look fine, we can move on to printing functional stuff. I did all the tuning that I had in mind, and I think I'm starting to get some decent prints. There's definitely still some room for improvement, but I think it's pretty good at this point. But just as a reminder, this was the first print. And uh, yeah, you can see the problem here, obviously. Just too much pressure advance. And as I said, I just forgot to change that to zero. But the next one, as you remember, was fairly decent. There were some resonance marks on it. I don't know how much of that you can see on the camera, but... Yeah, it was pretty decent actually, for a test cube that is, this is not obviously not a challenging print, but still is good enough to show some defects. But with this, a lot of the resonance marks are gone. You can still kinda see some around here, but uh, yeah, it's much better and that's obviously with the ADXL345. And uh, as a comparison, yeah, you can see the new print is much better. And I also did the pressure advance tuning with, uh, before printing this as well, so this is now also the correct pressure advance profile, even though zero works pretty well as well, but uh, you know, any room is, imp any improvement is improvement, so. Anyway, this is the Banshee, and again, it looks pretty decent, cooling looks pretty decent, there are no uh, major uh, print defects, there's a little bit of something here, but... Yeah, it, it looks pretty good in my opinion, so out of the box, after fixing the pressure advance problems and doing the input shaper and pressure advance tuning, 
uh, yeah, the prints are pretty nice. So we can move on to printing the parts for the Voron Zero, the rest of them. So it's time to talk about the uh, reliability issues that I mentioned. It's actually worse than it sounds and it took me a really long time to diagnose and I'm still not 100% sure what's going on but I think I have a pretty good idea at this point and uh, while I was troubleshooting this, like, as I said I spent days and I have like three and a half hours of footage shot for this just for investigating this specific issue and just to give you a perspective like an average Boron video, like a 20 minute video I usually work with three to four hours of footage for the entire video so yeah that's how long it took and yeah it was mostly jumping from theory to theory to theory and yeah as I said it took me a while and it also was a pre weird one so that's part of the reason and I'm probably using some of that footage in the background right now but uh, as I said that's outdated so just if you're curious about it you can listen to the problem and if you don't you can uh, always skip there are always the time steps in the uh, uh, description below or I think it YouTube shows them on the timeline as well but uh, anyway the problem started with uh, low voltage error on the Raspberry Pi which is fairly innocent but I kept increasing the voltage to the Raspberry Pi I went as high as 5.15 at, at one point uh, I didn't want to go past that but the thing is I increased the voltage it was fine and then started giving me an error I measured again and the voltage was lower which is pretty weird I noticed the fan noise which also uh, runs on the 5 volt supply should have mentioned that already uh, the noise of the fan kept changing like uh, went lower and higher and lower and higher like every second so uh, that suggests a voltage difference on the supply and yeah, the low voltage errors also didn't go away, so... Now, uh, the PCB I designed for the 5 volt supply, that's the next thing I focused on, because I'm not an electronics engineer, and this is, uh, you know, a hobby project for me, and I don't know much about electronics, so... Maybe I made a mistake on that PCB, was the theory at the time, and... Yeah, I tried a few things for filtering, but none of them really helped. So, um, yeah, I had to move on from that as well. And that's when I figured out what was going on. While I was trying to eliminate that issue, I decided to power the Raspberry Pi through an external, you know, wall power brick. And, uh, yeah, when I did that, but didn't turn on the 24 volt supply, which is now a separate switch, obviously, because that's still the meanwhile power supply on the printer. The Dwight Wi-Fi lights turned on, and they shouldn't have. And uh, I'm not just talking about the 5 volt light. A lot of lights turned on, and the hot end fan turned on. And yeah, that's definitely not supposed to happen. The, uh, the way I configured my Dwight Wi-Fi, and I did double check this, is to use its own internal 5 volt supply. If you don't know what that is, uh, most of the 3D printer controller boards out there generate their own. Uh, generate their own 5 volt supply from a 24 volt or whatever you feed it and uh, they usually have the option to use the 5 volt from the USB as well there are some cases when you want that usually you don't want it though and yeah mine was configured to use its own internal 5 volt supply and there was nothing shorted there but somehow it was and again I don't know why that happened but yeah it was kind of damaged and I think that's the cause of the problem because uh, yeah when I connect the Raspberry Pi to the Duet Wi-Fi using USB the 5 volt supply that powers the Raspberry Pi and the hot end fan and the Duet Wi-Fi's internal 5 volt regulator uh, their positive sides were connected to, uh, together which you shouldn't do so uh, I think that's what damaged the back converter on my PCB and yeah i did check that without any load on it it's it's gone it's fluctuating like crazy and yeah it's beyond recovery at this point it is damaged so i had to hack the pcb with the old bug converter that i have uh, the one that's back in the bomb for the volume zero and it works for now but i'm starting to notice some uh, sound fluctuations on the fan again on the hot end I don't know if I'm being paranoid or not, but 
If my theory of the Dwight Wi-Fi is five post supply and the back home orders positives being uh, connected together is true and that's if that's the cause of the problem, well, uh, it makes sense that it would also damage that back home order in time. So uh, I'm going to cut the positive lead that comes from the uh, Raspberry Pi to the Dwight Wi-Fi. If you want to do something similar for other uh, purposes, make sure you don't cut the ground wire or any of the data wires, but also don't cut the ground, that's important. Just cut the red wire and that will do it. I didn't do that yet at the time of recording, but I will cause, yeah, maybe I'm being paranoid, but I don't want to risk it again. And uh, yeah, after that, it will work fine, I'm sure. And I'll eventually replace that back converter on the PCB but I think I'll, I'm going to wait until I move before I do that because actually if I do that when I'm in the US it will cost me half as much as it would here so yeah, it doesn't make sense to do it right now so yeah, right now I'm running with the bug converter and it seems to be working so there's that and yeah, sorry for the long explanation but I wanted to go through everything I tried so I, I hope it was interesting for you Oh, and another thing, I'm not going to re-record that whole thing, so I'll just add this to the end. Every time I start the printer with the Raspberry Pi and the Duet Wi-Fi, you know, everything, uh, the clipper on the Raspberry Pi doesn't connect to the Duet Wi-Fi. And every single time I have to reflash the firmware to the Duet Wi-Fi, so that suggests there's something going, uh, something wrong with the EEPROM on the Duet Wi-Fi, which like most uh, MCUs used in 3D printer boards, I think it's on the MCU itself, so that suggests there's something wrong with the MCU on the Duet Wi-Fi. And yeah, I have to reflash the firmware every time I start the printer. And once I reflash the firmware, everything works fine. So yeah, I guess a part of the EEPROM gets corrupted when it's powered down. Again, there's something weird with the Duet Wi-Fi. And I think that Duet Wi-Fi, with the two problems I mentioned, doesn't have much of a life left on it anymore unfortunately but yeah i'll use it as long as i can and after that i guess we'll switch to a different board or something i don't know so with that issue hopefully fixed we can actually start printing uh, some of the parts and i actually already did that and i printed the new legs for the new bottom panels for the duet, duet zero pipe uh, volon zero and uh, I initially just extended these. The reason I had to do that is because uh, if you saw my bottom panel, it's just a rectangular panel and I mounted using the same screws that attach the legs, uh, the feet to the legs, to the extrusions. And that means the bottom of these legs have to match the bottom of the skirts. And in the original design, the, these legs are slightly shorter because they could get away with that. And yeah, it actually looks better if you don't well if you don't have a bottom panel, shorter legs look better, but yeah, in my case that's not going to work. So I initially made these longer, but the longest M3 screws I had, which were 50 millimeters, uh, the length of the slack, which we will say 37 millimeters or something like that, since there's also the chamfers here. So 37 plus 3 millimeters for the bottom panel, and that's 40, and then a few more millimeters for the leg, and you're only left with like, at the most, 5 millimeters of thread that's sticking out of the leg uh, when you put them all together, which uh, is definitely not enough. And even on a not worn thread, like a brand new extrusions, 15-15 extrusions, I'd still not recommend that, but in my case, uh, since I've been using those extrusions for a while, the threads on them, the beginning of the threads at least is worn and yeah, the longest M3 screw I had, as I said, 50 millimeters wasn't long enough for it to engage the threads and uh, yeah, that was causing some problems, so I had to design something else and this is what I have. I'm just going to show you one of them since uh, all of them are the same, well, the same method at least. So uh, basically, I designed this uh, two screw method of attaching these, which is also nice because, uh, yeah, let's put this here. Uh, it means I can remove the bottom panel with the feet up. So it's not still not ideal, but it's better than that than the other alternative. I can remove that while keeping the leg in place, with, which is important because with this uh, skirt here, uh, removing the legs uh, would have been an issue so yeah that's also an added bonus but 
yeah, the main thing, reason for this design is, as I said, I don't have long enough M3 screws. So basically, you can see the design here. You insert an M3 screw here from the side. I used 16 millimeters one. They worked uh, once. They worked fine. The distance here is five millimeters, so you're left with 11 millimeters for the extrusion, and that's uh, a good length in my opinion. Uh, and yeah, it worked fine. Now uh, you have to use a ball and driver, hex driver for this, either Allen key or just a regular driver, doesn't really matter, but it has to be ball end, so that's the limitation of the design. And the reason you can't use this hole on the top, this isn't a wrench access hole, this is for a threaded insert, it's the correct diameter for that. And with the threaded insert here, uh, I can mount the uh, feet to this going through the uh, bottom panel as well, so. Yeah, I think I used 12mm screws for that and 16mm for the leg to the extrusions and they worked fine. The ball and drivers can reach in, the, in here and turn the screw just fine. And even with the skirts around it, you can see that they don't really limit access to this. Only one that's kind of difficult and by difficult I mean you have to remove a part to do is this one. Uh, this is the one that sits next to the power input. so. There is a, the power socket right here, and which means there's not enough room for you to use the driver here. So this is the only tricky one. I could have designed the cutout on the outside to you know combat that, but also wanted to make sure that this thing looks uh, good enough, uh, decent. So yeah, this is the only tricky one. Threads are fine, and as I said, this works. So if you need, if you have a bottom panel idea similar to mine, or you're using mine. Uh, these will work well and I will release these initially probably only on my uh, github but maybe eventually on the Boron users as well. These printed just fine and I will show them to you in a second but uh, yeah as I said they work really well so we can move on to something else and actually there's one more thing I wanted to show you and that's the new back panel so yeah, you can see the current back panel that I ordered and you can see the problem here that I didn't think about when I was ordering it. Uh, yeah, you can see that there's not, there isn't a cutout for the Bolton tube here. And plus I'd like to add some ventilation to the backside electronics as well. So I had to redesign this panel and the new panel. I didn't have that on this model, but I have it here. So. There we go, I designed a cutout for that and a fan mount here. Now I have to use a slim fan for this, so I'll have to order a, a separate fan. I'll probably going to go with Noctua, like I usually like to do on larger fans. So uh, yeah, I'll order one of the slim Noctua fans there, 120 millimeters like usual. And yeah, that's the change I had to make to this and it's on the way. so. Uh, unless something unexpected happens, you'll see that in later in this video as well. But uh, yeah, with the legs printed, we can move on to printing something else for this uh, printer. So I don't know what that is yet, so I'll come back to you with whatever it is. It's now time to show you some of the things that I just talked about, so that it's not just words. So I'm going to start with the PCB. As I said, I had to remove the bug converter from that. And you can see the modification I made where the buck converter used to sit. It's just a bunch of wires running to this uh, stock buck converter as I explained. And as I explained, the problem is with the Duet Wi-Fi. At least that's my current theory, but uh, it sounds reasonable. So I think that's the case. Uh, as I said, it has some problems with the EEPROM, but more importantly, though they could be related, uh, the 5 volt supply that comes from the USB port of the Raspberry Pi and the 5 volt internal supply of the Duet Wi Fi are shorted and they're not supposed to be. And I don't know what's going on, but I'm pretty sure that's what damaged the back converter. So I'm going to cut the USB cable as I explained, but I'll do that off camera since it's kind of boring. But yeah, right now that's what I had to do. Also, while I was removing that back converter, I damaged the PCB slightly, and that's why you can see this wire going to the Y end stop. I'll fix that. It's a relatively easy fix on the PCB. I just need to remove it to be able to do soldering and uh, as you might imagine with one hand it's kind of difficult so I think I'll do that later but uh, yeah that's just about that so it's nothing too serious there. And uh, moving on let's get to the legs here. There we go. So this is the bottom panel. 
I showed this before and I think it was in the last episode. One thing that you might have not noticed though is, uh, you might not have noticed this, uh, this side is slightly taller than the rest, so this isn't exactly a square. This is 3 millimeters wider on this side and that's by design and I'll show that, uh, I'll show why in a second, but that's just one thing, otherwise it's just a solid bottom panel, so nothing too special about it. The feet with the uh, uh, screws, they go through here and uh, thread into the threaded inserts on the legs. So I'll just zoom in on one of them. I guess let's do it like this. So yeah, you can see the threaded insert there. And as I explained, there's a screw behind that. And as I explained, the way you reach it is through here. And well, as you can see, I can turn it with the screwdriver. So it is really easy to e reach except here where you have to move this, but it's easy to remove since there are wrench access holes for the screws here. You just reach, reach the screws through here, slightly loosen them, move this to the side by just a few millimeters and you can reach the leg. So it's still a relatively easy thing. So yeah, that's the modification I made to the legs. And as I said, they will be available uh, in the description below if you're interested in them. Uh, the next thing I want to show is the new uh, rear panel. As I explained in the CAD, there were some problems with it and I already showed you the shape, so here it is. I don't have the fan yet, fan here yet. I ordered a 15mm thick Noctua one. Hopefully that will fit. And I will use the rubber mounting stuff that comes with Noctua fans, so it doesn't vibrate as much. That's why these holes are kinda huge, but uh, I think these will also work with standard PC chassis fan uh, mounting screws as well if I have to use them so uh, Yeah, I think they will work with that. So yeah, here is a new panel and as you can see I also send it this so it's ready to be installed and we will install it right now And I'll add the fan later and I guess I'll update you on that in this video later Or maybe I'll put a picture on the screen or something. I don't know And then there are the skirts, nothing too special about these, these are just the regular uh, Voron 0.1 skirts that I, that are printed. So uh, let's get to installing the skirts, panels, etc. Here it is, the back panel installed and I think it looks really nice from the back here. And you can now see why I designed that 3mm extension, basically that lip on the bottom panel. Uh, it matches with the rear panel, that's the design. So. Uh, it, I doubt you will uh, order your panels based on mine, but if you end up doing that, uh, you need to pay attention to the mounting of the bottom plate. But yeah, with that, as you can see, it mounts flush and it looks pretty nice. Um, and I should also show you how it looks with the spool holder. So there you go. But um, there could be some potential problems with the fan mount. I'll uh, definitely try that later in the video though. So. Yeah, you'll know for sure. What I didn't think of is the Bowden tube coming down here and it comes down basically at the exact back of the printer so uh, for me to mount a fan here I have to push it back and yeah that I'm not 100% sure if it will work or not but you'll see later in the video. And one small mistake, well improvement I guess, I don't really, I wouldn't really call this a mistake since it still works, you can see the filament still slides in fairly smoothly. It's just to make installation of this panel slightly easier. I should have made this cutout slightly longer and I will update the DXFs with the uh, slightly elongated one so that the Bowden tube routes easier. So uh, yeah, this is how the printer uh, looks as I said. Oh, and you'll notice the camera is, as, I, as you saw before, temporarily mounted there. But you can now see that I cable managed it to the side and it goes in through the skirts. Now I will create mounts for this and that will uh, make sure the cable looks uh, more organized than it, <coughs> it looks currently. But uh, yeah, this is how it is for now. Um, it, it doesn't look too bad, especially from the front, so it doesn't matter too much. The problem was why I didn't route, this, uh, route the cable internally is because with the motor drives and the PCB there, there is no way for me to route a cable there. So. Uh, I had to route it externally, or I had to route it through the printer chamber, which uh, would definitely look uglier than this. So uh, this is what I end up ended up doing, and yeah, I think it's fine. So uh, 
yeah, I'll be back with the fan and that will probably be it for this episode. Well, I was wrong again and as you can see the fan fits here and works nicely. This is the 15mm fan I talked about, this one, a 12x15. I have a like 15 NFF 12s but I don't I didn't have any A12 so I had to order this but yeah we can see that it fits and the noise it generates is audible but and now with that running as you can see that noise that generates rounds this fan so and with the fan here as I said before that will be it for this episode so I hope you enjoyed it if you did, please leave me a like down below and thanks for watching.